we are left wondering if unity in the church should even be sick anymore or if churches are better off just doing their own thing without regard for other churches. Well, in the Gospel reading for this morning, Jesus prayed for unity in the church, which means unity among God's people is a desire that comes from the very heart of God. Holy Father, Jesus said, Jesus said, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. It is a profound prayer, isn't it? Jesus asked that unity among God's people be a reflection of the unity of the Godhead. Even as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God, so the church, he prays, would be one. It is always incumbent upon us to seek unity among God's people. Divisions in the church are not God's will, nor are they helpful for the church's mission of reaching the unbelieving world with the gospel of the Jesus' forgiveness and grace. That said, there is only one way true Christian unity can be found. Jesus, in his prayer to the Father, tell us, Jesus tell us exactly what that way is. Holy Father, Jesus said, Jesus prayed, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, keep them in your name. At another time, Jesus asked his disciples a question that would prove to be decisive for every human being individually as well as the decisive for the unity of the church. Who do the people say that I am? Because people didn't listen to God's word, there were all sorts of opinions regarding who Jesus was. Some said he was Elijah, or one of the other Old Testament prophets. Some said he was John the Baptist, who had supposedly and come back from the dead. The disunity regarding the person of the Christ was evident. Jesus pushed the disciple and specifically Peter further. He didn't want opinion and he didn't want disunity. He wanted a confession of faith based on the word of God based on the word of God. And so he asked, but who do you say that I am? Peter's response, because it was not his opinion or the opinion of others, but was based on God's word was in Jesus' name. Which is to say, it was according to the word of God. Peter confessed. Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Again, Peter confessed, You are the Christ, the Son of, Son of the living God. With that confession, Jesus praised Peter, saying, On this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell will never prevail against it. What a blessing. There is no saving knowledge. There is no saving knowledge of God outside of His Word. The Christian Church, which holds a faith based on divine revelation, must find her unity in Jesus' name, as He has been revealed in the Scripture, breaking in, into the world in which we live to give us of Himself. As simply as that may sound, history has proven that it is anything but simple. In the end, 
Unity in the church is a divine gift. Again, unity in the church is a divine gift, which comes from the very heart of God and through the fervent prayer of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus prayed, Jesus prayed, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one. Remember, Jesus went on to prayer specifically for you as he prayed. I do not ask for this only, but also for those who will believe in me through their work. He continued to pray for you to this very day, even this pandemic season and very difficult time. Of course, God answered Jesus' prayer. Jesus did indeed endure the glory of the cross to earn eternal life for you, me, and all of, all of the people. Jesus opened the way to eternal life by rising from the dead. God pour out the Holy Spirit to call us by the gospel and enlighten us with his gift. Eternal life is already ours in Christ. Again, eternal life is already yours and mine in Christ. Although our understanding of God's unity is imperfect in this life, we are unified in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we leave this world, again, when we leave this world, every one of us, we should leave this world. When we leave this world, God will fully glorify us with Him forever in heaven. There we will finally see and full partake of the glory of Father, not as a reward, but as a promise. Eternal inheritance for all believers. Until that day, we pray that God would use us to glorify His name in this world, in all that we do. Praise all you people, the name so holy of him who does such wondrous things, all that has been to praise him solely, with a happy heart is our main sins. Children of God, children of God with an angel host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen.